And welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of August 24, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with ACAP. On today's program, we're going to speak with some of our prevention uh, folks out there working in the community in new and innovative and unique ways during this pandemic. We'll catch up with them and the wonderful programs that they're sponsoring throughout our communities in just a little bit. But before we get to that, as we do uh, usually on ACAP Today, we're going to get to this week's news and information that you can use. And we're going to begin uh, by sharing with you that our our home energy assistance program um, is starting back up this week. Tuesday is the first day of appointments for the new season. Uh, for individuals who received heat benefits last year, in appointment information should have already gone out to you in the mail. If you haven't received your paperwork, please do give us a call. It should have your appointment date right on uh, the information that was sent to you. Now, what's important to note about that appointment date is that appointment, unless you otherwise call us and specify that you'd like to meet in person, will be done over the phone. So uh, please do plan to be by your telephone at the scheduled time on your appointment card that went to you in the mail. Uh, from that, all uh, HEAP appointment uh, paperwork will be followed up with through the mail. Um, and so we'll get that information out to you in the mail and ask that you get it back to us in a quick uh, time fashion because uh, your appointment time signifies uh, when we have about a six week period to process your application. If you have any questions, please give us a call at 764-3721 or the HEAP line specifically, uh, or visit our website at Energy Housing Programs. Uh, you can see the uh, website address there on your screen, uh, and we'd be glad to answer any questions for you if you can't find the answers uh, on our website, or just give us a call and we'd be happy to help you through. And again, we thank our HEAP staff uh, for a new season that starts this Tuesday officially, and we look forward to connecting with our customers throughout Arusta County over the phone. Uh, the COVID-19 Rental Relief Program, um, as the month of September nears, is a program that we know uh, folks who are impacted economically by COVID-19 may want to take advantage of. It provides up to $1,000 per month for a maximum of three months. We have registered and we have, I think, over 300 applicants uh, in the pipeline currently. We're working on those applications. Uh, if you have submitted your application through the Main Housing website, we're working to get through uh, them all. We will be calling you uh, when your application is up in the queue, so please be patient. Um, but we ask that uh, when you are called, uh, that you may want to contact your um, your landlord as their participation in the program is mandatory as well. And it requires them not to, uh, to begin the eviction process on any of the months that a payment is extended to them through this program. Again, all of the information is available through the main housing website. It's also available in a link through the ACAP website. And um, we certainly can help individuals who need to complete an application online if you want to call us here at the main office in Presque Isle, and we will help and do that application for you online uh, with staff here at our office. Uh, this is the week, uh, this coming weekend, where the County Has Heart Food Drive is, uh, is reaching its culmination. It will happen this Friday uh, and Saturday. It's currently going on at the Nordic Heritage Center, and you can drop off non-perishable food items at any point. As a matter of fact, they help stock the pantry shelves this past weekend with some of the uh, non-perishable food items that have already been collected. Uh, the Wizard of Oz will begin at 7.30 at the Nordic Heritage Center this Friday, um, and on Saturday evening, Star City Syndicate will be in concert. Uh, both of those events at the Nordic Heritage Center and the uh, admission fee, if you will, to both of those events is to bring uh, food uh, for the non-perishable food item collection drive uh, that benefits our little food pantries uh, here in Presque Isle as well as in Holton. Um, and as, as food is available to some of the other community partners who offer these uh, pantries as well. Uh, we, as, a, as the ACAP team, are encouraging all folks when they're in public and even when we're in our buildings and shared space here, uh, we are wearing our masks and encourage community members to do the same. Some of the smiling faces that you can't quite see there under the masks are encouraging you to join us in this campaign to help keep everyone in our community healthy. So please do mask up when out in public. Our offices are, are, still appoint, are still available and open by appointment. Uh, we are also reachable by phone and virtually, and we have curbside assistance at our Presque Isle and Holton facilities. So please take advantage of one or any of those services. Uh, we will keep you notified as our status in terms of being open changes moving forward. Uh, but if you are unable to call in advance, there is a video doorbell at each of our entrances, and please do feel free to use that to speak with staff directly inside, and we will come out side and help you or um, get you inside the building with the proper protocols. 
Um, if your family needs any assistance at all during COVID-19 and aren't quite sure where to turn or what's available, ACAP's Navigator service is here for you. Our navigators are in place to connect uh, programs and administration across the agency. So please do give us a call, especially if you don't know what services are available for you. We'd be happy to help and our navigators are standing by. They're working now on the rental assistance program, but are happy to help uh, customers with other needs. So don't hesitate to give us a call at 764-3721 and ask to be connected with a navigator. Our Hope and Prosperity Resource Center is reopened, as we've been saying, at our new location at 975 Skyway Drive. Uh, it's for individuals who are either experiencing homelessness or housing insecurity, but certainly is a resource that is available for the community. Uh, we encourage you to uh, visit with our staff if you are in need of services where they connect you with employment, housing, and a multitude of other available programs uh, that we can assist you with. So do stop by at 975 Skyway Drive or recommend anyone uh, to us uh, that might might benefit from the wonderful work that happens in that facility. Our Women, Infant and Children's program is now located at 771 Main Street when we're speaking about the services in Presque Isle. We're hit, they're headquartered here at our facility next to Walmart and are currently providing services through the window as you can see in that photo. Uh, we'll be reassessing and obviously uh, providing those services inside of, building, inside of the building um, as the temperatures cool in the month of September. So more information on that. But in the meantime, uh, you can certainly access our WIC services here at 771 Main Street through the uh, privacy booths in front of the building. They're also available in Holton uh, through window service there, as well as at our sites in Caribou at Pines Health Services at Fort Kent in our facility in Fort Kent at our ACAP facility in Madawaska at our ACAP facility, and now at the Community Center in Van Buren. The WIC farmers markets are happening uh, throughout uh, this season. Uh, we're going to be talking about why this is a great time to visit a farmers market with our prevention folks in just a little bit. But if you'd like to visit a farmers market uh, this next, actually this week on Thursday, August 27th, and the one after that will be next week, the last one on September 1st. They're from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and they're at our 771 Main Street facility here at ACAP. But we'll also be talking with Allison Gooding in a little bit about some farmers markets that are happening outside of Presque Isle. Uh, that you can certainly take advantage of. Uh, fine. Uh, next up, we wanted to remind uh, our community that we are updating our technology to better serve our customers. This includes a new phone system and website. Uh, we urge your patience as we navigate through the newness of these systems. Um, and I believe Holton will be brought online this week and that will be the last of our centers to receive access to the new phone system and will promise much better service over the phone as soon as we get all of the gremlins worked out in the new system. Uh, you may also qualify if you are uh, displaced at, at work or have been uh, had your hours reduced or health insurance has been impacted as a result of COVID-19. You may qualify for a special enrollment period through the healthcare insurance marketplace and navigation program. Please do call us. Our local navigator, Stan Targonsky, is standing by and available to help you navigate through the healthcare marketplace. Our home buyer education uh, homeworks classes are in effect. The August class was completely booked, um, but the September, October, and November classes still have limited enrollment opportunities. Uh, for more information on this class or for the wonderful benefits that you get toward the purchase of a home, contact Greg Doak. His email address and phone number are there on your screen. Stuff the Bus Aroostook, though the collection um, has stopped, uh, the backpack giveaway program is still very actively uh, in play. And we encourage you, if you or someone you know has young children who are entering their new school year, some schools have already started uh, and are in need of school supplies, we have extra backpacks this year uh, with school supplies available at our facility here at 771 Main Street in Presque Isle. And we can also navigate to get the backpacks closer to you uh, through our network of agency offices across Aroostook County. So if you would like an application, uh, please either stop by our office um, or please do give us a call and we will get you access to that application. It's a simple application and if you qualify for programs like HEAP, WIC, SNAP, or TANF, uh, you're automatically eligible um, and we look forward to serving you in this capacity. Our early Head Start and Head Start programs are gearing up for a new, albeit very different kind of academic year. Our early Head Start classes resume a week from today, uh, the 31st of August, and Head Start classrooms will open on the 8th of September, the day after Labor Day. Each of the sessions, uh, each of the 
classes will be in session for four hours per day. And we, of course, will be observing new practices and protocols. We encourage you to contact your local center for that information. And if you would like to see if, you're, if there's space for your child to be registered in one of our early care and education programs, or would like to inquire about a future uh, enrollment in our programs, please do give us a call um, and we will certainly give you that information and be happy to speak with you. Uh, and finally, in our news and information you can use, uh, as many of you know, uh, immunizations, childhood immunizations, uh, took a little bit of a back burner during the pandemic. And so a public health nursing is holding catch-up immunization clinics across the state. Uh, we do encourage you to call the number there on your screen if you are in need of getting your child caught up for immunizations. Certainly as a new school year starts, this is a great time to make sure that that is in play and that that happens. And with that, that's uh, today's news and information that you can use. I'm pleased now to welcome members of our prevention and wellness team to the broadcast. We actually have five of our team members, um, and I'm going to begin um, with Meg Hegman, who is a newer team member, but today is starting a new uh, role with us at ACAP. And so, Meg, before we get into the activity, share with us the exciting news of your new position with our agency. Sure. I am thrilled to be with you today. And as of today, um, I am mourning the uh, moving on, although it's for a fabulous opportunity, Jesse Pengel has accepted a different position. And this is his last week. And so I will be stepping into a supervisor role. And so I'll be working even more closely with the other team members here to ensure the highest quality of service through all of our different prevention grant programs. I'm very excited for the opportunity. Now, some of you may be familiar with Meg. She recently did the hosting of Facebook Live events, both for some great community activities that we did in partnership with Micmac and Micmacs and a number of other community organizations um, in Caribou and Presque Isle. I know there's one coming up in Holton, but she also hosted those events, Facebook Live up in the St. John Valley where our team members, many of our team members who are joining us in today's broadcast also participated. Um, so it's been a really exciting summer. Um, despite COVID-19, you've made managed to find ways, you and the team have managed to find ways to reach folks. So maybe a quick recap before we uh, bounce into this new event that's coming up uh, shortly. Sure. So we have we had the opportunity to uh, use some of the COVID downtime to be able to get over a big learning curve. So we've learned a lot about technology and also expanded some of the programs that we have available. So we have some new media literacy trainings that are available that can be facilitated virtually or uh, in person. So when schools get back in and, and kind of figure out their groove, we'll be working to present not only Prime for Life, which we've had available for some time, but also Media Ready, which is a media literacy program for middle school youth. We have uh, Media Detective Family, which is available for families with elementary school children. And, uh, our, our, as Chastity will mention, she has also been able to adapt to a variety of online formats as well. So we're excited to have a wider range of offerings available for folks. And now that we've kind of figured out, at least to some extent, what we can safely do, we want to make sure that through this difficult time, people have an opportunity, especially young people, to gather to be socially connected, though physically distant. So we've been able to create a program um, kind of to replace. So in the spring, typically, we would host all seventh graders for Aroostook Youth Prevention Day at LP. And we weren't able to do that because of COVID closures. So we wanted to provide an opportunity this fall for folks to be able to get together safely. And it will be a masks required, physically distant event. But we know that social connection is critically important to the ability of youth and adults for that matter to manage stress in healthier ways. So we are thrilled to be putting together an event called Impact. It will be September 12th on Saturday from one to four in the afternoon. It'll be at Nordic Heritage Center and it's for grades six through 12. And it, we will have a ton of different activities. So we've been really thrilled to have a number of different partners. I think a lot of organizations are really chomping at the bit to get back in contact with folks. And we're hopeful that young people are really looking forward to an activity where they can safely gather as well. So grades six through 12, we will have opportunities and activities um, separated a little bit. So middle school students will be in one area of Nordic 
and the high school students will be in a different area so that we can provide kind of age appropriate activities and information. We're going to have bingo and we've got Prescott community players are going to come and lead some improv games. We'll have a yoga instructor and we'll have some free yoga mats, thanks to Renee and her program. We're going to have a mask fashion show. We've got water balloon four square. We've got um, some of those inflatable ball suits that you can get in and kind of bounce off of each other. Um, we have a number of different activities and the whole goal is to really help people find healthy ways to cope, to reconnect socially uh, with young people in the area and with adults who really have resources to bring to bear to help you through difficult times and, and the stressful uh, existence that is COVID back to school season. So we really hope lots of folks will come out and join us. We'll have door prizes that we're giving out every hour and we'll have lots of different giveaways and we look for it forward to a really, really fun, exciting time. And I can't wait to see some people, even if it's behind a mask. So is it just a show up kind of event or do you need to do any pre-registration or tell us how we, we connect with impact? It is just a show up event. We will be taking temperatures and we will require masks. So you'll have to stop to kind of make sure that um, you don't, you aren't at risk for spreading COVID. So we'll be doing the screening questions and all of that sort of thing. And we will be enforcing physical distancing as well. So, um, but we're pretty sure we'll be able to stay within the guidelines because it is an outdoor event. And because we won't be huddling closely, we will not be in the lodge. We will stay outside in the fields. And so to that end, the rain date is Sunday. We'll, we'll, we'll pray for and hope for good weather on the, um, on the, on the 12th. Um, so it's a Saturday event um, and uh, brings uh, youth from all over Rooster County together in a uh, socially distant and COVID-19 appropriate way. Absolutely. Anything else on that event you want to touch on before we move on to some of your colleagues? Um, I won't add any more about that event, but I will say that with our partners at the Boys and Girls Club, we are also, we have one more showing of Coco. So for the last couple of weeks, we've been able to do a drive-in style showing of Coco at Sunset, and we've been able to show some of our new prevention commercials as part of that. And it's a free event. Um, again, it's COVID safe. You'll be staying in your vehicle. And we did a showing at the roller rink in Caribou and at the mall in Presque Isle. And our last opportunity will be this Friday, the 28th, and it will be at Recognition Field in Littleton on Bell Road. So I invite you to come on out for that one as well. And we'll have yet another fun event for families. Great. So for all of our friends up in the Valley that had access to the Skylight Drive-In throughout the season, Meg and team are bringing a drive-in theater now to Southern Aroostook after two stops in Central Aroostook last week. So great time to bring the whole family out and, uh, and have a good socially distant good time. All right. Thank you so much, Meg. We're going to move on now to uh, Chastity Holland. And Chast, there are a couple of programs that you have been working on uh, that are sort of ongoing and allow folks to access um, more at their convenience. So let's start by talking about uh, Be Proud, Be Responsible. Tell us, I, I've been showing slides from uh, about this program in our news segment in, in recent weeks, and I think uh, folks would love to hear more about the program from you directly. Sure thing. So uh, Be Proud, Be Responsible is a, a series. It's it can be done in one six hour day, or we can split it up into three uh, two hour days, whichever works better for uh, the students that are interested. It's very, um, we can really alter it to, to fit. Uh, in the class, we do a lot of discussion about um, AIDS and HIV and, and just making sure that the youth know the responsibilities that come with the the decisions that they make. Um, and it's a lot also about empowering the youth to, to um, make choices that will benefit their futures um, as opposed to, so to really like think through um, their choices. It also helps to give them that voice that they might not feel like they can use a lot a huge part of the class is um, like talking back and forth to one another so um, something that might have been embarrassing for them to talk about or or whatever to anybody else 
um, you're kind of teaching them that it's okay to speak up for yourself. It's, it's actually very important to speak up for yourself. And uh, that's a huge factor in, in this class. We, we hope that all of our students who take the class will leave with, um, you know, the added benefit of having that voice that maybe they didn't quite have before. Uh, and then we do, um, we do what we can to uh, reduce sexual behaviors and sexual risk behaviors. Um, we do a lot with um, the condoms and making sure that they're used properly. And then also going back to the fact that they can choose abstinence if that's what they want to do. Um, just because there's peer pressure to do something they don't want to do doesn't mean that they need to um, give into it. So um, those are the, the best parts of the, the Be Proud, Be Responsible curriculum. It's fun. Um, I know it sounds a little different out there. It sounds like you're in health class again, but really it's, um, it's nice to have someone who's not your regular teacher teaching you about the stuff that is super important for, you know, your future. And Chas, these classes, again, are, I, I, I would always ask Sherry when the slide would come up on the screen, Sherry, what's the date that I'm promoting, but there's not really, you're, you're working more individually with folks and working around schedules, correct? So it's a matter of people calling you or reaching out by email and saying, I'd like to, to take advantage of this class, and then you work with them to find a time that, that works? Yes, absolutely. So the design of the class is more for smaller groups. So um, to, to have a set date, I mean, we've tried to set dates and either um, either we don't fill them or it doesn't fit in a youth schedule. I mean, the students are going back to school now, especially the high school students. So it's hard to um, give them something else on top of their busy schedule that they have already. So we are focusing more on uh, that individualized approach. And I find sometimes too that, um, when they're learning something one-on-one -on -one or even one to two students, it's they're a little bit more um, willing to open up and willing to speak up and, you know, all of that thing as opposed to a huge group of, of their peers where someone might, might judge me for what I'm saying or something like that. Now, Chastity, the same can be said about the program that you run that uh, focuses on financial literacy, which is really geared towards small groups as well and yep. accommodating schedules to the best possible. So why don't we shift gears and talk about uh, the financial literacy course offerings that you provide? Yeah, sure thing. So uh, the most recent financial literacy um, series that we've been providing have been linked to a $500 mini grant with the Machaya Savings Bank. Um, this uh, series, we're, we're going with students that graduated in 2020 or 2019, um, and that's just for the, the purposes of the mini grant, but it helps to alleviate some of the financial burdens that are associated with school. Um, Meg, we were at an event and she was reading something, one of her um, friends had shared on Facebook that she just paid $350 for a parking pass at a school that she's already paying, uh, I think it was like $25,000 to go to or something like that. So um, we were like, let's help you. Let's figure out, you know, a way that we can, let's get that paid for you. So uh, the, the mini grant goes towards anything that the students need to go towards their post-secondary plan. If they need um, books, if, they, if they're going to a tech school and they need tools, if they um, decide not to go to college for the first year, but they need uh, a place to stay, it can help for um, their security deposit or uh, anything like that, really, just anything to help alleviate that cost a little bit to um, make staying in the county a little more enticing for our youth. Um, for the class itself, we cover different financial literacy topics. Um, this one we can do in uh, three hours or we can do three one hour sessions. Um, the students will go through budgeting and savings, uh, credit cards and loans. Um, some of my older students have 
Uh, they're more familiar with the loans and credit cards and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of my younger students don't understand um, how credit works and how budgeting works and how all of those things are associated. So um, it's really important to link it. Uh, one of my favorite quotes that I had heard is that you may come across a bunch of people who will never need the chemistry class that they took in school, but uh, you'll never come across someone that doesn't need financial literacy. So uh, to me, it's just super important to have that education there because you never know when you'll need it. I don't expect my students to memorize anything that I teach them. Uh, I just hope that when the time comes, something that I taught them will spark and, and will, will trigger a memory so that they can use that information or think of me and reach out back if they had a question about something that, that they could do. Are both programs uh, of no charge to individuals who participate? Absolutely, no charge. And so best uh, way to get in touch with you is through your email and phone number, right? Yep, absolutely. My email and my phone number are the, the very best ways. Um, if it happens that they have me or any of our uh, ACAP staff on Facebook, they can also reach out to someone. We're all really good to connect with each other. So, Great. All right. Thank you so much, Chess. We're going to move on uh, from your programs now to talking with Elaine Seip. And Elaine, I know that a lot of your programs are also very much geared toward individuals and how you can help uh, individuals and connect on a one-to-one -on -one -one basis, but also if they need the support of a group, it's available. And I'm, of course, talking about uh, tobacco cessation. So tell us about how things are going with your program and uh, how people can connect with you. Oops, we've got you muted. <laughs> I have um, been working with individuals by actually meeting with them like in a park or uh, in, a, in a driveway <laughs> um, because we can't do um, group meetings, which was really the best way to do it, but we can't do it anymore. So we have to uh, change our ideas of how we do things. And it's, um, uh, someone had, learned about my program through watching it on um, the county, um, what do you call it there? On w county County. Yeah. And so he called me and I really found that I was actually able to help him um, find many more resources with ACAP because beyond wanting to quit smoking, he needed other help. Um, and so I was able to hook him up with a navigator um, so I really am proud that working with this program actually allows you to talk to people and find out what their other needs are um, and realize that ACAP does a whole lot of stuff for a whole lot of people and it's very willing in this county to, to help people. So I have been meeting with, uh, I met somebody up in Madawaska, I'm meeting somebody in Smyrna Mills. I'm willing to make the effort, um, you know, people don't have internet, people don't have cell phones. And when they don't have those things, you just can't say, oh, well, see you later. Uh, we are actually making the effort to meet with them in person and get them on their way because people need to quit smoking. They know they need to quit smoking um, for many different reasons. Uh, maybe you have already see COPD and you, you just have to stop smoking. So I've, I've worked with people and we have a program that is just really uh, connects um, the reasons why they need to quit. And I love the peer support when we are able to do it through Zoom meetings or when we were able to meet in person, but it really does help to just talk to someone and have someone that they can, I message with people um, or they can call me and if you have a connection with somebody that actually cares about you quitting um, and knowing different ways to help you and getting you hooked up with nicotine replacement therapy, uh, getting you, um, it, you, it's always better when you have a support system and I am there as a support system and I love, love it. Um, and I just, I really am very happy and proud that I work at ACAP and am able to say, yes, we can do this for you, but we can also do so much more. 
Great. And how, how has it been in terms of folks who have been reaching out to you right now? Has the, the, the times that we're in right now, the pandemic and the concern and the, I guess, families spending more time together and the like, um, created a different environment for the work that you do in tobacco cessation? Mm -hmm. It has. Um, I'm, I'm meeting them more one-on-one -on -one than I used to do. Um, I used to meet, you know, in a conference room. I uh, really can't do that anymore. Um, but people, because of COVID, I think, are really realizing they have to stop smoking. Um, I think it has given a lot of incentive to people. And having the word out there uh, is great. Great. Anything else about your program that you'd like to, to let folks know about before we, we go on to healthy eating and activity? I am pretty much at your beck and call. Um, I am willing to go whenever, you know, whatever works best and wherever works best. Thank you, Elaine. And I know that with when you're doing something like quitting smoking, that's very important because it's, uh, it's, it's when and where it needs to happen. So thank you very much for your work. Um, we're going to move on now to the member of our team who sort of has a touch by an angel scene. She's got some, uh, the backlight uh, is coming in and she's got her physical activity equipment just going there. So not quite Roma Downey for those of you who are familiar with the Touch by an Angel series that probably a little bit dated myself there and others here at this segment uh, by saying that. But um, so Renee Bragdon, in order to not make the COVID-19, COVID-19 is the number of pounds that you might gain during uh, this pandemic, which certainly uh, Zoom meetings tend to be like watching TV for me. So they make me a little hungry. Uh, talk to me about some of the great things that you've been doing. Um, I know that there's been a lot out there. You've been participating in things in parks and open spaces, um, but there's more to come. And let's talk about where you're headed with 5210. Let's go. Right. So um, thanks for having me today. Um, 5210 Let's Go is a childhood obesity prevention program, as you may or may not know. Um, but we've got a lot of activities that have been happening this summer. Um, one of the great things that have been happening is a, a story walk loan program that I've kind of really tried to push. Um, if you don't know what a story walk is, it's the pages of the story that are displayed along the path of a walkway. And it has really hit, um, especially the summer where we kind of have to be out and about. Um, but the Easton Rec Department uh, actually sent me some photos and it just made me smile. I just was so excited to see that we're promoting physical activity and um, they've been great to work with. Easton um, switched out their stories uh, every few weeks and so we were able to meet and I got them new ones and they had a great group of kids that um, joined in every week and did a story walk um, with the rec department. And uh, they, uh, they really, I, I just feel like it was really beneficial for them. And you know, when we're promoting physical activity and literacy at the same time, I just think it's a dual purpose and, you know, and, and it's fun. So as you'll see here, the, uh, some of the pictures of the story walk um, that took place um, with their signs of the Eastern community um, rec department and um, so that was one of one of the big things and just know that if anyone is interested in um, this loan program just you can contact me uh, through my email and I'd be glad to get out these stories um, I have five or six to pick from and um, anyone any group is more than welcome to uh, borrow them and get them back to me for others to share. Great there's also a hike, a hike up haystack you want to talk about? Yeah, yep. So that was something that uh, it was kind of an um, impromptu thing that uh, I got word that uh, the Mapleton Rec Department had this program that uh, it's a hiking, biking, running program, and they worked uh, throughout the summer to take the groups. Um, and they pretty much stayed within uh, one area. But as a celebration of the last day of um, this program, they did a hike up Haystack. And so um, they were more than glad to have me join in. We had a, a small group, you know, and there were six kids and two adults. One of the moms joined me. She had a great time. Um, but we're promoting physical fitness and activity. They had a great time. Each uh, one of the participants received uh, trackers. So from now on, they can track their steps. We hope the goal is 10,000 per day. Um, you know, it is some days and it isn't other days, which is fine, but the kids were excited about that, and they received water, uh, free water bottles, uh, ACAP water bottles, so uh, really, really good time, and I was glad to be part of that. 
indeed some great stuff and there's more to come um, as we transition into back to school time. You've got a couple of exciting activities that focus on both nutrition and physical activity. Yes. Yep, and so we have a few trainings that are coming up that I really wanted to make sure people knew about, and it's actually, both of them are tomorrow. And so I'm glad that we're doing this today. I want to get the word out. Um, the school nutrition back to school culinary art training, um, this is great for any school nutrition, and um, we invited all um, directors and kitchen um, managers in Maine to actually join into this virtual training. Um, we've been promoting this for quite some time now, uh, right across the state. And as of now, we have over 130 participants. They're professionals wanting to get some ideas um, to, you know, and we just want to support the school nutrition programs in any way that we can. So this is one way to do it. Um, we want to make sure and increase the quality of the foods that are served in our schools and um, just help kids to make um, the healthy choice the easy choice. So this is a, a great way for the adults to help um, in any way they can. So that's Tuesday, August 25th from 10 to 12, and they can contact me um, if they would like the link to register for that. And then there's the Let's Go Active Play Workshop, and this is more geared toward the children themselves, correct? Right, and well, no, it, it's actually for ECE, which is Early Child Care Educators. And so this is idea, this is um, ideas that, to promote physical activities. It's a way to modify um, physical distancing um, requirements as of today. And there's ways to adapt the activities that um, give the providers um, ideas, the way that, so that kids can still enjoy being active and maintain some distance at the same time. So great an opportunity to help um, early care and education professionals across our state uh, be able to adapt uh, with the changing season, but the, uh, the realities of COVID-19 at the same time. Right, exactly. Great. Anything else at all, Renee, that you wanted to make sure we knew before we move on to Allison and the great things happening in Southern Aroostook with the, um, with the SNAP-Ed program? Um, well, I know if uh, people aren't able to make the training, um, the active play training, we do have a book called Active Play, Fun Physical Activities for Young Children, and you can purchase that book. Um, it's at activeplaybooks.com, and so that's a great resource if anybody would be interested but can't make the training. Great. Thank you very much, Renee. We appreciate all the work that you're doing to keep our communities uh, both well-fed and active. Um, and so speaking of uh, healthy, nutritious foods, Allison Gooding, uh, we visited with you at the beginning of the season when folks were planting gardens, and now it's time to reap that harvest, and boy, are you ever reaping that harvest in Southern Aroostook and seem to be having a great time doing that. So welcome back to the program and tell us about the exciting things happening in Southern Aroostook as it relates to the most wonderful time of the year when it comes to fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Jason. I'm happy to be with you again. And you're right, there's been a lot of things happening since the last time we spoke. Uh, last time we spoke, I was collaborating with teachers in the ACAP early education programs to uh, provide um, garden kits that went out to our folks in Holton and in Dyer Brook. And uh, because of the pandemic, of course, we've um, been able to do some great collaborations and some pivoting in terms of instead of being in the classroom, which of course we can't be at the moment, that will be looking a bit different as we uh, head back, but uh, because we've been able to use this time, as others have mentioned, to, to do some other creative, inventive, um, uh, innovative uh, approaches to being able to educate folks in a different way. So I've been really pleased to be able to uh, partner and collaborate with a number of people, not only in the community, but across the state. And most recently, I've been able to collaborate with the Maine Federation of Farmers Markets, as well as the Holton Community Market, which is a, a weekly farmers market uh, here in Holton uh, from uh, about May till mid-October. And we just had a ball, not this Saturday, not the day before yesterday, but the Saturday before. So on the 15th of August, I was just so delighted to be able to uh, borrow the, the WIC 
canopy and that was so welcome because it was a beautiful sunny cool breezy day and it was just perfect conditions for greeting people um, and I spoke to so many people both adults and children uh, about uh, recipes and tips for working with uh, fruits and vegetables uh, people we wanted to make sure that we encouraged our snap friends to come and use their EBT cards at the farmers market and not everybody uh, knows about that that's a fairly new um, uh, system change and we've been able to partner with the MFFM the main federation of farmers markets as well as the Chamber of Commerce and the Holton Community Market in order to encourage our SNAP friends to come in with their EBT cards and um, meet up at the information booth and go around to the different vendors, spend what they'd like to spend of their EBT cards on uh, fruits and vegetables, and then come back to the information uh, booth and they're able to match dollar for dollar uh, with something called main harvest bucks and that was what I was getting to explain to our shoppers on Saturday that uh, they can match that and instead of having uh, uh, a certain amount of produce they're basically doubling it they are doubling it so they were able to enjoy that um, special perk uh, if they came in with their uh, postcard that they received in the mail uh, then they were able to get main harvest bucks and uh, go around and uh, get beautiful fresh produce and I worked with adults as well as with children with the adults I was able to provide them with um, measuring cups or measuring spoons uh, and that turned out to be a, a needed commodity not everybody has handy uh, a set of measuring cups or measuring spoons so I gave them the choice and also gave them information about uh, vegetables and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit but uh, I was able to, to have some really nice conversations with um, with members who came through the market as well as with children and that was a great joy to be able to see kids come through uh, and they had a special um, treat because the first 13 visitors to my booth got uh, a veggie plush which you saw in the previous slide and that was uh, a real big excitement for them they didn't necessarily all see what they received but you can see that they might have had a, a carrot or a, a cauliflower and my favorite was the string beans they they were great um, and i did see some of the children peeking into their bags because I blocked them so that they couldn't see exactly what they got in their grab bag. So they were peeking and in their grab bag, one great thing was that they were able to use um, a $2 wooden token in order to buy fruits and vegetables that day if they chose to, or they could keep it until later. And that was a really unexpected outcome that I hadn't um, really anticipated happening but some children as you can see clutched in the fist of one young shopper they're the veggies that they received that from their $2 uh, uh, vendors coupon their their uh, token and uh, they were very very pleased with what they were able to purchase that day if they chose to use it uh, and the parents were delighted as well and I had some very nice conversations with farmers about uh, how they'd like to be able to help out because of their um, overabundance of, of produce uh, right now. So that was a great opportunity to uh, network and link up with, with others. In order to get their prize bags, the kids did a farmer's market scavenger hunt bingo. They didn't have to find everything on the scavenger hunt card, but out of the 47 children that I spoke with, uh, 40 of them chose to keep their card and continue to play almost as if they were doing a blackout version. They were pretty excited to be able to go around the market to find vegetables that were red or orange or green and uh, find flowers. So I, I tweaked that a little bit so that we could really feature some of the things that were at that farmer's market. I'd gone previously the week before to speak with vendors so that they would have a heads up that kids were coming through the following week uh, and they would be able to have 
bags set aside that were costing $2. So they could use their monies that way. Or, and this was the unexpected outcome, I didn't really anticipate that kids would hang on to their tokens, but they chose to because they know that pumpkins are coming. So for pumpkin season, it's sort of this delayed gratification that they're going to be getting a pumpkin, something that they really wanted later in the season. So that's a neat thing to learn at a young age as well. So I worked with uh, people from toddler age up through probably junior high. You can see in the image there, uh, a family came through and the older children helped the younger children with their scavenger hunts. And it was a neat, interactive, intergenerational activity that they did. And there was a lot of buzz going on. So it was well worth it. I loved meeting with people, building uh, community and, and collaboration with our our neighbors. So that was a really fun day. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to more opportunities like that. I, in fact, I went back to the farmer's market myself day before yesterday and spoke with uh, a vendor who's um, associated with the Maine Federation of Farmers Markets. And she likes this idea of partnering. So I think that there will be more down the road opportunities to partner during this season, maybe, uh, to uh, work not only with the Holton Community Market, but in fact, you can go on to the MFFM website or onto the Holton Community Market, and you can find all kinds of, of uh, farmers markets that are available and open for your uh, shopping pleasure. So it's a, a great chance to kind of demystify the whole farmer's market process for some people who might not think that hmm, this is not necessarily for me. Well, it is. It's really pretty accessible and uh, I got a good chance to help people figure that out and um, get some excitement built along the way. So it was fun. And this, is, and this, Allison, is really prime time for farmers markets because as you mentioned earlier, the, the harvest is bountiful and this is the right time of year for it. So uh, I know that you have a chart here that we're going to share with folks that talks yes. about just how green this time of year is. Absolutely, and this, this image is uh, part of what I shared with the adults and I put it in their grab bag so that they would see it immediately and the reaction was huge, which is why I wanted to talk about it today because not everybody knows when um, certain produce is in season. Well, as you can see uh, about the, well, let me see, about two thirds of the way across is August and you trace that down through and see everything that is um, in, in uh, good season right now. And people were using that. I had some really nice conversations with adults about peas and um, some are available, but you might want to be looking at, at beans and wax beans are, are coming in. So it was a, a good opportunity to share that information. Oh, good, said someone. I'm going to put that on my fridge. So there were some great conversations that I had. And uh, in fact, I even got to speak with a colleague that I've met only through Zoom, another SNAP-Ed nutrition educator from the Bangor area who'd come all the way up to Holton to see the farmer's market. So that was really nice to meet her in person. Uh, I also collaborated with another nutrition educator who was doing a similar event, and I, I chose to do it on the same day as my colleague in Sanford uh, because I would thought that that would help with branding across the state. And uh, the SNAP-Ed folks really had a, a good turnout, I think. So it was, it was a great opportunity, and I had such fun uh, and seeing the joy on kids' faces as they peeked into their, their um, grab-and-go grab bags. So we use social distancing and masks and face shields and um, people were just happy to be out and about and having good conversation and, and uh, strengthening our, our community. Oh, excellent. Sounds like a really good time. And I could tell from the look on your face and the faces of the couple of kids who, who took a moment to take their masks off to pose for the camera there that the smiles were plentiful, as, as plentiful as the vegetables, apparently. That Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And this is kind of prompted one, one other thing I wanted to say about um, moving forward. I had a, a, a thought that we could partner with uh, a partner that I've done a lot of work with in the past at the um, adopt a block of a rustic and 
the work that we're doing with ACAP and uh, the United Way with, with our uh, backpack giveaways, that's happening actually on Saturday. So I thought, well, no better time than providing a, a back to school publication so that, that um, I'm gonna be providing 200 Chop Chop magazines, which are designed for uh, uh, families to do some easy recipes and some fun kids activities. And so I've provided uh, Adopt a Block with 200 Chop Chop magazines to go out in the backpacks to the children, probably in, in grades one through six or thereabouts. So it would be for the younger folks, but uh, everybody seemed to like them. So, um, so that is a good way to share too. So I'm excited about that. And that's happening this Saturday. Yes, usually the annual block party, but more of a drive-through celebration. It is. So. It's a drive-through, but we're still doing drawings for bikes and those kinds of things. So it, it will have a, a festive atmosphere. Sounds good, making the best of a, of a challenging situation. And I will note for those folks uh, who were paying attention to Allison's bingo card that there was one block that was dedicated to a sweet tree. And if you're in Market Square on Holton, trust me, I know that not too far around the corner is Sadie's Bakery. And Saturday is Pumpkin Donut Day, so you can knock off two check marks on the bingo card for that one, right? Since that's that's absolutely right. And uh, all things in moderation, right? So right. <laughs> those are, are some good, good hints. My family knows it's not a drive through Holton on Saturday morning without a stop at Sadie's. <laughs> well, you might want to check because they're on vacation. I know, I know. And I went last week and learned that the hard way. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. Well, our prevention team, I don't mean to end it on a note about donuts because, you know, a long, <laughs> Renee and I have a pumpkin, a, an ice cream tonight thing in common yeah. too. So. Yeah, and but we have some good corn recipes too. Absolutely. You know what, Renee? I tried your corn recipe in the microwave. That Did was you? fantastic. It is. Yeah. It's sweeter and it's juicier yeah. and it just keeps the goodness right in. Tell everyone that tip before we go. We don't want to leave them hanging. Well, if you don't want to take the husk off and you know how messy it is, you just pile them on top of each other on a plate and you put that right in the microwave for about 12 minutes. I put five of them in the microwave, 12 minutes. Um, just cut off the end, the widest end, so that you can push it out when it's done. So you squeeze the skinnier end and you just push it out and it comes flying out when it's ready. And the moisture and the juicy and the sweet is just, it just all stays right contained and it's the best way to cook corn, believe it or not. So. The best part was I didn't have a dirty pot at the end of it either. No dirty pots, no <laughs> mess, none of that fur, hair, none of the angel hair, whatever you call it, and no messes. And it was perfectly fine and even put goodness. butter on and it was good just like yes. that. Yes, yep. well, I'm glad you liked it. Thanks for the tip and thank you all for joining me on this edition of ACAP today. I know we ran a little long, but you had so much valuable information to share with the public. And I thank you all for not only doing that today, but for the fantastic work you're all doing across Aroostook County and all of our communities um, to make people healthier. So appreciate that. Um, and uh, before we leave you today, we do want to remind you that if you would like to get in touch with us, whether it's to learn about any of the wonderful programs we talked about today, or if you're in need of assistance, uh, either COVID related or not, please do reach out to us. You see our phone number and our email address uh, there on your screen. You can also connect with us on Facebook. Uh, Sherry, Becca, and other members of our team uh, put some great updates there. I know that we have a prevention uh, site as well and uh, great ways to connect with us through Facebook and uh, multiple opportunities there. You can search for us on YouTube where we have past editions of ACAP today and other great uh, lessons from our prevention and early care and education folks and also visit our new website acap-me.org and ladies I hate to end it on this note but the photo of the day today is not it, it's, it's it definitely an in moderation if you will type photo and it's members of our heat team who at the beginning of the program we talked about the start of a new heap season happens this Tuesday, the 25th of August. Well, in order to prep our team up and sort of get their, their sugar flowing for the new season and, and their energy up, our friends at Maine Housing sent them a, uh, a, a good quantity of whoopie pies. Believe me, more than the heat team got to benefit from these. Uh, but they uh, put their masks on and did a thank you photo for the team at Maine Housing with some of the wicked good whoopie pies uh, that they received. Um, and so we want to thank Maine Housing, our partners for not only the Home Energy Assistance Program, but weatherization, home repair, and a number of others uh, for thinking of our team as they were getting ready to start up a new season. 
um, and we promise you will have a healthy snack to accom accompany uh, those whoopie pies um, as well. So with that, uh, ending a, a great episode of ACAP today. I'm Jason Parent. Thank you again to all of our guests from our ACAP prevention team. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you back next week for another edition of ACAP today. <laughs>